Okay, everybody. So today I'm going to be unboxing the Omax uh, 40x by 2500x binocular compound microscope. This is the listing on Amazon. When I purchased this, this was the best seller microscope for was for sale for about $199, and I'm going to be using it for fungal microscopy, which is really just a fancy word for saying I'm going to be looking at fungus under the microscope. So a couple of couple of notes about me and this process. I've never owned a microscope. In fact, I don't know that I've ever really used one before. So this is another example of something that I'm self teaching myself as part of my journey in, in learning biological synthetic engineering or genetic engineering. Uh, I have some very, I have some curiosities in the world of fungi or fungi, which I knew properly exactly how to pronounce that, that, uh, that have prompted and warranted me wanting to create uh, or wanting me to get a microscope. Um, so I'll show you some of those right now. So I'm actually in my lab. This is my, I don't have a great way of showing it to you right now. This is my flow hood here and this is the microscope, which we'll get to in a second. But uh, one of the things that I've been doing as part of uh, learning microbiology and genetic engineering is isolating cultures that I find in my general area. So I have a couple here. This is something, this is a, probably some sort of cheese mold. This is a mold that I found on cheese. And then I have a random one that I found in the wild. It's got a lot of spores in here. And then this one that I'm really particularly interested in, uh, one, because it looks cool, but two is you can see it's producing these, I think are metabolites, but I'm not really sure what the species is. And there's a lot of, different kinds of mushrooms that you can tell by you looking at its physical characteristics when it fruits in the wild. But this is, uh, these are not one of them, especially for different kinds of molds. There's a lot of different kinds of molds that look like white growths on a plate. Um, and there's a lot of different reasons why a particular mold might have this particular sort of characteristics. And that's, that's called morphology. That's like the shape and size of the mold. And so, what we have to do is we have to dig in a little bit more and get more information in order to figure out exactly what these organisms are. And that's where fungal microscopy comes into play. There's a whole set of skills necessary in order to take a small piece of this and look at it under the microscope and identify some key characteristics about the organism that can help you identify what it is. And this is something that microbiologists do already. If you were to get sick, and you were to get a fungal infection on your body, you would go to the doctor, they would take a sample or a culture of that growth and they would send it to a lab where they might grow it out, they might look at it under a microscope, they might run it through lots of different tests to try to figure out what it is, what that organism is so they can figure out how to treat it. In my case, I'm just curious for the sake of learning. I wanna, I wanna learn how to identify a random fungus that I, that I find that that you can't identify just by looking at its physical characteristics by itself. You need to either, you need to use some other methodology. And so how do I do that? I mean, I know very little about the different parts of a fungus itself. So there is a, a book that I'm using. This is a, a very big book, as you can tell, and it's kind of heavy, but right now it's this and the internet. Uh, I got this book on OfferUp, which is kind of like a modern day Craigslist, for I think like $10. And it is Coneman's Color Atlas and Textbook of Diagnostic Microbiology. But the cool thing about this book is there's a whole section on fungi, identifying fungus, and there's a whole section in the back color, uh, color photos of all different kinds of of organisms that you can that you can look at. Um, again, I didn't see anything in here that resembles the ones that I that I have in particular, because most likely these are like there's a lot, and it would be hard to just fit all of the possible fungi in a book. Uh, but this has the techniques that you can use to identify the parts of the fungi or the parts of the mold that you're looking at under a microscope. And that's what I want to use to sort of at least 
um, get the data, look at it, post it online, and see what people say. Let, let me let me get the information and, and come up with some hypotheses and see if I can get some people to confirm what it is that I'm looking at. And if I can do that, then I check off one of my goals, which is to learn how to identify a random organism that I found in the wild and uh, use science to actually figure out how to identify the species of it. And then after I do those things, I am planning to take a piece of the tissue, extract the DNA out of it, and then send it off uh, for run PCR on it, which will amplify that the DNA that is used to barcode the, the organism, and then send that off for sequencing, get the sequence back, do some, what's called a, an alignment against it, publish it to uh, GenBank, and then do all kinds of cool stuff. Since I can code, I wanna you know, knock a, bang on the data a little bit with Python and, and see what kind of cool stuff I can do with it. All right, so let's get to the fun part which is something I've been looking forward to, which is the unboxing of the microscope itself. Now, I'm not gonna go through a whole lot today. One is, it is across the United States today, it is incredibly hot and I'm in a homegrown lab tent in my attic with no AC or ventilation. So it's really hot in here. Uh, but so today I think what I wanna do is just open up the microscope and I just wanna, let's just take a look at the parts of it. Uh, I have a little guide, so there is a, if you look online, especially the shroomery forums, there is a uh, notes on microscopy and how to get started scope, and there is a guide for mycologists, um, and it's got a lot of different contributors who've put together this guide that's been published. I think uh, uh, folks in the mushroom community have probably heard of uh, Alan Rockefeller, but there's Andrew Baldwin, Leah Binlin, Caleb Brown, Tim Cannon, Alonzo Cortez Perez, Jason Hollinger, Linus Kudzma, John Robinson, Alan Rockefeller, Nino Santa Maria, Anton Soklik, and Mike Wallace have put together this really great uh, fungal microscopy PDF. And maybe I should make share a link to that. I'll probably share a link in the description for this when I post this on YouTube. And I'm using that, and I'm using this book, and then I'm just using online resources. But for today, I'm gonna to unbox the microscope, and, and then I'm going to just identify the parts of the microscope. And then we'll look at the, the microscope components together, and we'll just talk about how they work. And that'll just help me get more comfortable with what I'm gonna to need to do, which is the next part, and that's preparing slides. Because we have to get to the point where we're comfortable enough with knowing what needs to be done in order to take something like this or this and we have to figure out uh, how, how can I take a piece of this tissue and create a slide for that and put that under a microscope and what am I looking for? Like, how do you actually do that? I don't know. I mean, that's part of this journey. That's what I'm learning right now. But I need to learn the different parts of the microscope. So let me, uh, let's see if I can adjust this to where we can see. There we go. Probably more interested in seeing the actual microscope stuff itself. My laptop here. Okay, so again, for people that are thinking about buying this microscope, this is the OMAX, the model number M82ES SC100 LP100. This is a 40X to 2500X LED binocular compound microscope. It's compound because it has two uh, eyepieces that you look into. And uh, this one does not have a, tr it's not a trinocular because it doesn't have the third component on the back part of it that typically you can attach a camera to, but that's okay. I'm planning to take pictures through one of the eyepieces. That's the plan. And uh, it goes up to 2500X, but my understanding is for fungal microscopy, you typically want 1000X with oil. Um, and uh, yeah, we will, we'll, we'll definitely be working on that uh, horror vacui. I mean, I'm, I'm learning that. So we'll, we'll go through that process. That's the plan anyways. Um, okay, so this microscope, it says it goes up to 2500X, but it's sort of like, I guess the best comparison that I, that I can think of is if you've ever bought a, digi a digital camera before that said it did zoom and then it did digital zoom and you realize the digital zoom really sucks, it's not real zoom. 
I think anything over a thousand is not really gonna give you that much extra quality in the image itself. I think when you get beyond a thousand, you need to start looking at other kinds of magnification in order to get the sort of clarity and detail that you're looking for. You also need, uh, this is also an oil immersion lens. Now you need oil, now I don't know why, yet I, I suspect it has something to do, I don't 100% understand that part yet, but there's oil that comes with this. And my understanding is when you create the slide, you're going to put a little cover slip over the, the fungal sample, and then you're going to squirt a little bit of oil on the cover slip. So then when you turn the 100X objective, it will be immersed in the oil. And it, there will be a little bit of oil between the lens and the cover slip and the microscope slide. And, um, and that's how you use the 100X objective. And there's three objectives on this microscope. And so how do you, if you only have three objectives and the three objectives are 10X, 40X, and 100, so how do you get to the, to the 2500X if you only have 100X max? Well, it's pretty simple. You take the magnification of the eyepiece and you multiply that times the, uh, the one of the objectives. So if you have a, a 10, if you're on the 10X objective and your eyepiece is also uh, 10X, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, <laughs> 10x objective, then 10 times 10 gives you the 100x. So how do you get the 2500x? Um, it's going to be the 100x objective, one of the big three that you turn, um, times presumably a, what is a, uh, how do you get the 25x eyepiece? If I did my math right, right? 25, 25 times 100, that's 2500. Yes, okay, yes, so it'd be a 2500 eyepiece times the 100, that gives you the 2500X. Uh, this also, this kit also comes with uh, the, a mechanical stage, which lets you raise and lower uh, the, where the slide's at. It has an LED light, and I know there's some differences between the lighting, between, uh, they have halogen bulb lights and LEDs, and there's some differences there, but I'm not an expert, so I don't 100% know what those are yet. It comes with some blank slides, some cover slips, and some lens cleaning paper. The other thing that I have that I'm waiting for, which is why I can't really get into the fungal stuff now, is stain. When you were, when you take a piece of the tissue from from an organism, and you take, you're going only going to be using this. Okay, uh, I'll tell you in just a second. When you only take a small piece of this mushroom and look at it under the microscope it's going to be very difficult to see because a lot of the components or a lot of the pieces of this, when you get them small enough and you get them under a microscope are, trans are translucent. So you can't, the light, does, light goes through them and they're kind of clear. So you need something that will penetrate this, the fungal walls, the cell walls, and they have different kinds of stains for that. Um, and so I'm waiting on the stain and I'm using, uh, let's see, what did I get? I got a Congo red stain. And the book that I have that I was telling you guys about earlier, they suggest using a, a blue stain. There's a, each one is kind of chemically different and they have different mechanisms for penetrating the cell wall so that you can actually look at it. So, all right, I think I've done enough talking. So let's get into the unboxing here. So this is the box. You can already kind of get a sense of like, how big is this microscope gonna be? It's not, it doesn't look too big. In fact, when I looked at the Amazon page for this, uh, it, it actually gives you a comparison of the different models. And the other models are uh, marked as full-sized. So I'm guessing this is not considered a full-sized microscope, whatever that means. But I think it's gonna be good enough, you guys, because everything I read says we only need a thousand X to uh, to, to, to look at some of this fungus under a microscope. So we've got more than that, which is fine. And uh, this is the best seller. If you go to Amazon right now, you'll see, just, just put in compound microscope. This is the best seller microscope. Okay, so we have, I really loathe uh, styrofoam packaging because I'm a little bit of a clean freak. And what I find is that it breaks apart really easy and I get little pieces of styrofoam everywhere and my OCD starts to go nuts. <laughs> all right. Okay, cool. See what I'm talking about? See all that 
See all that broken stuff? But I got it pretty well contained in here. So I'll put that here. Okay, so up top, it's kind of heavy. So up top we have, let me dust off all this styrofoam. This is, this is what I was talking about, all that stuff. <laughs> okay, so we have two boxes of slides. And we have the slip, the slip covers, slide covers right here. So that's, that's that. Okay, set that aside because this, this is what I was talking about. I hate, I hate styrofoam packaging because of that reason. And it's not good for the environment either. Uh, but yeah. Okay, here we go. So I'm guessing this is, oh, so this is, this comes with lens cleaning material. If you decide, everybody told me when I was thinking about buying a microscope that I should try to buy one used. And, uh, and I looked and I really couldn't find any used ones that I thought were going to be as good as maybe just buying one new. Everything I saw was pretty much similar in price, but it was old and it didn't come with the packaging, original packaging. It didn't come with all the things that this comes with. It certainly didn't come with the lens cleaning paper. And, um, one of the things you have to make sure you do with your microscope is any with any optical tool that you use is dust is an issue. So I believe this says it comes with a, a cover slip that goes over it to protect it. But this is lens cleaning paper and this is going to be useful when we do the oil immersion. We need some way to clean the objective of the oil. It doesn't take a lot of oil and uh, you know, this is like, it, it feels like tissue paper. It kind of looks and feels a lot like tissue paper. And it comes with a hundred sheets, which is pretty cool. That should be good. All right, so let's get into this. Let's see if I can find a good way to attack this guy without creating even more of a mess in my lab here. Ah, see how it says up? Let me do it that way. I don't know if you can see that. That says up. Oh, cool. Someone on the stream, uh, Dan, I don't know if that's your name, Dan, but uh, Dan's Plants. So what's the name of this microscope? This is a compound microscope. The brand is Omax. And it is a 40 to 2500X compound microscope. All right, I don't know if you guys can see this. First thing that fell out is one of the eyepieces uh, and you can see it says WF20, there we go, 20X. So that's cool. And uh, let me set this up here. So I have the other eyepiece here. And so another 20X, okay, that makes sense. These, this is probably gonna be one for each eye. And then some oil fell down. So this is the oil that came with it. And there are different types of oil, but my understanding is this should be fine. I think type, you want type A, That's the that should be the type A kind of oil. All right, so let's take this guy out. And uh, try not to break it as I'm opening it. Okay, we have another little piece here. I'm not, ah, okay. So we have another two, we have these two pieces here and we have these two eye pieces here. I don't know yet, exactly. I know these are probably gonna be where you look into them, but how they all go together, I'm not sure yet. That's kind of what we're trying to figure out here today. Okay, so we have a plug, which is gonna be for the LED light. It's just a pretty simple, straightforward, uh, looks like it's a 100 to 240 volts, uh, five volt. So it's five volt, pretty low, low powered. Uh, anyone who's done any like Arduino programming knows that uh, even like a small board like Arduinos are low, low powered. Low power is good. Okay, this I think I know what this is. This is going to be the, this is going to be the uh, the cover for it. It's uh, it's kind of made out of the same material as uh, floaties. It's kind of like that plasticky kind of like, it even has that, that pool float smell to it. All right, 
That's that. All right, let's look at this guy. Let's open. Okay. See if you guys can see this. Yeah. So it's got a silicon silica pack in it to keep it dry. Definitely don't eat that. I'll probably keep this. I mean, this is really what this is for, but just for now, to give it an extra layer of protection. Okay, we have the microscope. And uh, let me just show you. Made in China. China. <laughs> uh, we have, I'm not gonna tell you the part, go through the parts of this yet, because I have a guide for that, and I'll read through it, and we'll look at that together. There's a little piece of paper there, but we have, we have this microscope. So these are the objectives. There's four objectives here. There's a 10, 40, 100, and a, oh, I say 40, 10, 4, 140. And then we have this, uh, the eyepiece up here, which looks, to, looks, like, looks like it rotates all around. So that's pretty cool. Then we have some adjustment knobs and whatnot here. So what I'm gonna do is try to move this a little bit closer because I wanna go into identifying the, the parts of the micros microscope here together. So we can get a good idea here of, uh, of how this thing works. Okay. Okay, so this particular microscope Let's start at the top, and I'm using a guide. It may not be apples to apples, but we'll try here. Um, at the top, there is a knurled, how do I know? wide field eyepieces. Okay, we have these eyepieces here. It looks like there are some caps that come off of that. We have these little adjustments, and I don't know if you can see this, but in this, there are some, uh, I don't know what you call these, there's numbers here denoting the focal, focal point, I'm guessing. Oh, and I also just noticed that if you look right in here, there's also a number for focusing. And this is, uh, I think this is called the sliding interpupillary adjustment grip. And so, yeah. Maybe what I would do if I were a scientist and I had a sample in here and I wanted to make sure I could mount it and Replicate exactly how I had it set up. I might record those numbers so that I could make sure that I have everything Set up the way that I that I used it. Okay, so we have the interpupillary scale here And so what I can do is pull this apart. I don't know if you can really see that but these come apart which helps adjust where your eyes are Far apart kind of like if you have binoculars you can kind of if you've ever used those you can kind of adjust them that way uh, this is called the this is the viewing head of the microscope and uh, we have the neural head locking screw screw knurled k-n-u-r-l-e-d head I've never heard of that before but that's what it's called so there's this little little screw right here and I think yes if you screw that tighten it down, it kind of locks in the head, the, uh, the, what is it called? The viewing head of the microscope. Cool. This is obviously the revolving uh, nose piece here. And these individual uh, lenses here are called the objective lenses. These are the objective lenses. This is the arm of the microscope. It's pretty easy. Then we have two neural blocking screws for securing specimen holder. Okay, that makes sense, right? So if you look back in the microscope here, there are these two screws here that lock down the slide that's gonna be in here. So that's cool. Let me loosen those up. Oh, I can't right now. Okay. And uh, let's see, specimen holder, mechanical stage, well, there we go, so interesting. So let me scroll down a little bit. Now the guide that I have has two knobs, one for the coarse focus knob and one for a fine focus knob. What I, what I have here is probably this one that brings the stage up and down. I'm guessing this is the coarse one because it gives you more dramatic movements as you turn it. The smaller one here, 
See, there's two. If I turn this one, it goes up. If I turn this one, it's more subtle. So what I suspect what we're gonna be doing is when we place our slide in here, we're gonna be using the coarse one to get really close and then the fine one to make those fine-tuned adjustments to it. Then we have, there's something called the iris diaphragm lever and that is going to be underneath the microscope right here. And so there are gonna be cases. Now, let's look under this microscope. Now, it might be a little hard because it is black, but there's this little lever right here. And what does an iris do? Just like the iris in our eyes, opens and closes. So this is what controls how much light can come in and out of the microscope, this little slide right here. Okay. Okay, what else do we have? This one, this guide has an Abbey condenser. I don't know if I'm sure if I'm pronounce, pronouncing that correctly, um, but I see that there is another one of these adjustment knobs here, and I'm not quite sure what that does. We obviously have the power down here to control the light, and we have the stage adjustments here that will move the stage forwards and backwards. You see this little, this bit right here? which is gonna be really important because when we're looking at a very small sample of fungus here, if we take a very small piece of it and we build the slide, <clears throat> we may need multiple pieces of the slide. We need to make those really fine tuned adjustments to find just the, maybe the, the outer edge of the mycelium to get to the parts that we actually wanna see. So all of this is designed to give us that really fine grain control that we're looking for. And um, we don't have an illuminator connector, like the guide that I have is showing, but this is the base. And then looks like the last part of this is going to be the light intensity control knob. Remember when I said earlier that we're going to stain the fungal sample to help us penetrate through the cell walls of the fungi, where there are going to be particular times where we want to make the light more intense or bring it lower so that we can make certain features of the fungi more uh, more visible and uh, let's see anything else it looks like the power is here in the back and uh, I think that's about it so yeah so that's the unboxing of the microscope let me just move this back here a little bit so I can talk to you guys a little bit easier and it's getting really hot in here I actually have a temperature <laughs> in my lab it's insane it is 83.6 and I'm starting to sweat. Okay, so we've done the unboxing. We went through all of the major components of the microscope. What are the next steps? The next steps for me are I'm waiting for the dye. Once I get the dye, then, then we can get dig into getting a sample and mounting a slide. And then we can go through and begin the process of looking at identifying the components of fungi uh, under the microscope and I don't have a great way of showing you guys what I'm what I can see other than because I don't have a camera hooked up to, to this yet which I, I hope to be able to do that soon but I think what I'll do is we'll probably do another live stream where I go through a mounting procedure and show how to mount a slide how to create a slide of a fungi sample and then we will look at it and then I'll try to snap some pictures because you can take your phone and hold it up to the eyepiece and snap a picture. The, the other, some of the other things that I will need to do is in, fun, in fungi, when you're looking at the morphology of fungus, it's really important to be able to measure the individual components. So what I'm lacking is something called a stage uh, micrometer. And there's other ways of doing it. There's, there's ways of digitally measuring the distance of the things that you're looking at in here and creating notations on the image. Um, but I don't have that quite yet. So let's first master mounting fungus on a slide, looking at it, making sure that we can get good, clear images of key structures, being able to identify those structures. Once we've gotten that to that, then we can go and actually measure them and annotate our pictures with software to, uh, and then publish that to places like Mushroom Observer where the larger mycology community can help me confirm what I suspect the species of these mushrooms actually are. Um, 
Okay, so I don't, uh, I think that's it. I think that's it for now. I'll leave it there. And thank you guys for joining. And this is the Omax microscope and I'm super excited. I can't wait to try it out. Cool.